but we don't surrender to him. We don't allow him to prune us. Another part of camp that stuck out to me was Austin's sermon. When he said, worship isn't a designated time, but a lifestyle. This phrase really made me think about if my life demonstrates Jesus and honors him. Not only living in the Sunday faith, but living his word out Monday through Sunday. W word. Later that night, I had a talk with one of my best friends at the right here. Uh, and God brought us closer together because we were both struggling with the same sin. Um, after that confession, after that conversation in that confession session, Miss Kira and Bliss walked in and they mentioned that they were going to write sins down and things that they were rooted in the past on a piece of paper and they were going to throw it in the bonfire so it could burn. Mm -mm, we decided oh, no. to join them, and down at the bonfire while we did this, I could feel a part of my heart soft. Um, I know the sins won't go away as quick as the paper burns in the fire, but that's the start of God working. Hi, I'm Heather. Hey, Heather. Hi. Okay. So before camp, I was going through a lot. As most of y'all know, I'm, all, I'm always a happy and energetic person, but deep down I'm struggling with a lot of stuff. I have a lot of sin in me, and doing both Saturday sessions was what spoke to me the most. What spoke the most was during Didi's sermon, was you may think God pruning you is hurting you when the reality is cutting out the cancer. He said the final destination is heaven or hell, and that opened my eyes. I remember holding one of my best friends while they were crying to the song Gratitude, and then I started bawling. At the end of Austin's sermon, he told us to pray on our own. I prayed and I let everything out. I let all my sin out. I couldn't stop letting it out. I really sought him, and I really wanted him, and felt the biggest relief of my life when I let everything out. I feel new, and I feel loved. I don't feel ashamed anymore, and I'm ready to let God take over my life, and I'm ready to follow him. Amen. Noel. I have no testimony. All can do is my my little questionnaire. Um, I'm Noel. I don't ever do this, so bear with me. But um, I'm a senior. So this is my last uh, revive winner as a student. Oh yeah, senior privilege. And, uh, by far my favorite. So thank you to all the leaders who are here, who made it all possible. I think I can speak for everyone. It definitely doesn't go unnoticed. All that you guys do. Um, this past weekend, I really loved and enjoyed seeing all the community and the love that everybody truly shares with everybody and how beautifully, beautifully demonstrated it was. Just knowing that someone is always gonna be there for you and is gonna have your back if you need someone to sit with, if you need someone to talk something out with, advice. Just knowing that someone is always gonna be there for you is so special because I know not every community and not everyone has that, so that's definitely a beautiful thing. Um, I would say my biggest takeaway from this weekend was Saturday morning. Um, Dee Dee was talking about pruning, and as the concept, I got and I understood, but it was great to just sit back and listen to like the magnitude of how important it is to truly give yourself up to God and just let Him take control. Um, he said one thing that really stuck with me throughout the weekend and kind of followed me through the week. Um, he said it's not about how God can help you, like when you're your prayer requests with this test, this relationship, this person, whatever it may be, it's not about how God can help you, it's about how you can honor God. And about how in everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you watch, search, you fill in the blank, it's about how you can honor God. And it was just a really good uh, perspective check, I would say, just sitting back and being like, hey, it's not about me. Um, yeah, it's my life, but it's the life God gifted me with. That I'm able to come here, I'm able to talk, I'm able to got here safely, so it was just a good reminder of like, hey, it's not about you, just sit back and let God move and he will, so. Okay, okay. 
走走走。Okay, so, <laughs> so um, in like late September,、um, my dad was diagnosed with stage four glioblastoma, and ever since then, I guess like,、um, not like I was getting away from God. It's that I felt so alone in my pain that like I couldn't trust.、Him. And so.、Um, <laughs> Winter revived felt like a whole different reset for me because、um, on Saturday night,、uh, when Austin.、Um, To come up and to like pray for each other, and her,、um, Michaela and JJ, <laughs>、um, praying for me, and I didn't feel alone anymore. And it was like the Holy Spirit had touched me. Um. For like the first time in a long time, yeah, and um, uh, it just—it was an amazing experience, and I just replay that moment a lot in my head. So. <laughs> oh yeah.
And it might not be today, and it might not be this week, but please keep pushing at it because I promise you he is there and he wants that relationship with you. I promise you. W testimony. Oh yeah, man. Hello, everybody. My name is Max. Um, for you all who may not know, this is my first time going to one of these revived camps. And uh, my whole life, I mean, I, I grew up in church. My dad's pastor here. They raised me in church. Um, and then when it comes time for things like this, I was kind of, you know, on the rocks about it. I didn't really want to socialize with people and, you know, talk to new people, meet people. Um, but something, you know, the Holy Spirit this, this year just spoke to my heart and he told me, just, just, I'm calling you out to the mountains. Just, just come meet me here because I know you've been waiting. I know you've spent your life kind of in the word, but not really receiving it and looking for me. Um, and I'm ready for you to receive me now. And so when the opportunity presented itself this year, I was still, you know, I wasn't all happy and ready to go. I was still, you know, a little nervous and, and questioning it. But I decided maybe, you know, I'll deny my flesh just one time and choose to meet God in the mountains here. And even the first day I was still kind of, you know, I didn't really see God. I didn't, like, you call me out to the mountain, where are you at? And um, I spent time really, I, I, I told myself that I'm, I'm not here to, you know, have fun. Although we did have fun and all that, I'm not here to have fun. I'm here to meet God. For real. And um, something changed that, that weekend where everywhere I looked, I began to see all the things that I've been through, all the things that it's all been adding up so it's so that the Holy Spirit could, could move in me, so God could um, lead me to this plan that he has for me. And I began to see God in everything. And upon returning home, I got back to the, the you know, my old setting and everything. But I just, I had this new vision about my life, all the things that I used to face and deal with. I'm not attacking them. I'm not, um, I'm not dealing with them the same way because when we were, we were in the mountains and I met the Holy Spirit and there's something about when you truly meet that spirit, when you truly talk to God and encounter God, you begin to see things in a different way. And I, I, I came into the camp with plenty of worries and concerns and Jesus had an answer for me. And it was, it was Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And this whole week I've been really showering in that verse because I've realized that this whole time I've just been looking for the kingdom. But God says to seek for it. Looking is just standing around thinking I'm good just because I got the free gift of salvation. But God told me that there's something more than just that free gift. He told me to start to push down walls. And what Didi said, prune some things out of my life. And, and don't just look for me, but seek me. Mm. And, and so I've, I've been spent like, we were, we were there and I really received that message and I started to see the Holy Spirit. And I decided like, you know, I've been baptized before. I've, I've said I've been saved before, but did I really know what that meant? I, I mean, you can go to church and not, not receive the Holy Spirit. Um, so that night, Saturday night, it was, I decided like, this is, this is, I met with God and I'm like, yeah, this is, this is where I belong. And I ended up rededicating my life. From you know that point on, 
I've really been trying to not just look around, not just stand around, looking around the room to see if his kingdom is there. Because I know it is, so I'm going to go after it. I'm going to go look for it. And, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm still working on and, you know, trying to live for God. But the, the difference is that I know that his kingdom is there and I will seek it and I will find it. Uh, this is, I think, my first time uh, sharing my testimony, so bear with me. Um, this camp of 2023, Revive 2023, was my first camp with my brother and my dad. And I, I just felt really grateful on Saturday night when my dad hugged me and he, he wished uh, for my like, love and my journey through Christ. And I thought that was... That really touched me and really, really powered me through uh, last week, uh, trying to live for Christ. And I've been like, I know I've been loved by my parents, but you know, I've never really truly felt Jesus' love until this time. And really longing for this love, I thought it was, it was really, it's really wonderful. It's, Austin said we're surrounded by a godly community over here, and we're very, I'm really grateful that we are, and we can always lean onto each other, and we can always, you know, have a short resume. I thought that was really fun. Hi, my name is David, and this was my first year at Revive Order. Um, I thought it was really impactful at uh, Austin's sermon. It said that uh, you have to be rooted in good soil, and you can't be pulled away from worldly desires, and that's okay. But it's too much when you start to pull away from God and folk. And it's said that to prioritize God and remember that worldly desires mean nothing to you when you're in heaven. It's only a matter of time until you go to heaven, and this life is short, so you have to make the most of it. Um, it was really impactful at Saturday night when... Um, Cam, Cam said that you just to let it all out, and that that made me got closer to God. So, um, and also Saturday night we were just you know praying with other people, you know, and then uh, this experience has been very good to me, and yeah, that's it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Chloe! Oh, yeah. Guys. Okay. Um, disclaimer, I'm gonna be very vulnerable with you guys. Um, okay, so many of you guys don't know this, but recently my health has been on the decline. Um, And it's been really hard um, noticing that, like, um, for the past 118, if you guys didn't know, for the past 18 years, um, I have been struggling with emotionally eating. And it's been very hard because it, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to act or do any waterworks, um, but it's been really hard. Um, in the past, like, since the year started, I just remember that a lot of, like, old insecurities have started coming up again, and um, I just want to let you guys know that, like, we as leaders, we're human too, and so we go through things, um, and this is kind of a bit, a bit of a silent battle that I've been struggling with. Um, and then we went to Revive, I went with my brother, he's back here, 
Love you. <laughs> He's sticking into the floor right now, but I am so glad you came. Um, Saturday night, um, I remember the response song, we didn't have the band, and we sing Great Are You, Lord, and I couldn't get through it. <laughs> um, and I just remember falling to my face, just surrendering everything that I had been going through um, to him and just, I couldn't even get words out. It's been a long time since that's happened, but I couldn't even get words out. Guys, it, I was just crying in pain. Um, just crying out in pain, you know, because he takes everything. Um, he, if you cast that burden, that, cast that care on him, he'll take it. I remember laying on the floor. I couldn't see anything, but I felt a hand stand up. And I think you might be here. It was Cucumber Boy. I don't even know his name. It was a sixth grader. He's not here. Is he here? Not here. Okay, he was here earlier. I love you, buddy. Um, him and David, I believe there were some other sixth graders that came up, and they held my hand. Um, all these years. Rejecting yourself before other people even get the chance to. Looking and searching for love in the wrong places. And I found it in Jesus. And these beautiful people that are here tonight. And oh yeah, Chloe. And so, I finally lifted my head and Ezekiel looked at me and he said, Jesus loves you. He just looked at me and he was like, Jesus loves you. And everybody here in this room loves you. And I don't think we understand the difference between liking someone and loving someone. <laughs> Because love is so unconditional, it's without boundaries, it's without hurt and pain. Sometimes it might be a little uncomfortable but sometimes, but that's just what love is. Because God is love. And I didn't notice that I needed that reminder until I left. I was like, at the time I was like, I don't think I'm battling with anything. And then I got home and I was like, wait, God spoke through him. The Holy Spirit spoke through him. And I'll never forget that. A sixth grader, a sixth grade boy, had to sit there and remind me who God was and how he's working for you guys. So I'm, I'm almost done. I'm done. I promise. I just want to encourage you guys that, that it's okay to be human sometimes. It's okay to feel things, and it's okay um, that we have our own personal battles, but just know that you also have a personal relationship with the Father, and He is there every step of the way, every night that you found yourself lonely and crying in your bed, every night that you felt like you had nobody who loved you, and everyone, this society and people rejected you. Just know that God loves you, and I, I can't, I'm sorry. Um, but I love you guys. And I'm so glad that I was able to go this year with you guys. And I'm so glad that you guys are in my life. You guys are a huge part, a huge part of my life. And so I just thank God for being here and being with you guys. Oh, yeah. Let me go. Hey everybody. Um, my name is Miguel. Um, this is my first time going to Revive. Um, so before even Revive, you know, I was having a connection with God, but I kind of felt myself departing away from Him. And I didn't really know how to get connected back with Him until I heard about Revive. And I was like, that's a great opportunity to reconnect with Him. So... After that, I was talking to my uh, foster mom. She's back there supporting me, by the way. I love you. Um, 
and after that, oh, I got registered and I was excited, but I didn't really think it was gonna be a big change for me, you know? I was just thinking, oh, it's a regular camp, so I might just meet some friends and then, you know, move on, but no, it really changed me. So, Friday, you know, we uh, got on the buses and, you know, we met everybody and everybody was chill. And then Saturday morning, we had all the activities and um, that's whenever I really met, uh, got to meet everybody. And I love you all because I really got a close connection. Like y'all invited me in as in I was y'all's family. And then that night, you know, we were doing the session with Dee Dee and everybody. And, you know, whenever Dee Dee said we had to cut off stuff, stuff to like negative stuff in order to grow that really connected with me because I had a lot of things I had to cut off you know like bad friends you know all that and you know so we praise God through our lips but you know we have to praise God through by our minds and our hearts and we have to open our heart to God and we only yeah we can listen through our ears but we have to listen through him through our hearts and as the music was playing, you know, I got on my knees, and that's whenever I gave my life to Christ. And, and you know, I've been baptized by my pastor. Thank you. And like, um, you know, and after I got baptized, I was thinking I got saved, and you know, but like Max was saying earlier, you know. Are you, do you really think you're saved? And after that night, I've changed a lot. I was thinking about a lot that night. And, you know, I was thinking I have to change myself for better so I can get a real connection with God. And, you know, um, my bad for my children. I'm a children. Um, <laughs> you know, and then after that, I was like, it's Saturday. We just came yesterday. And, you know, now we have to leave by tomorrow. But... You know, I was hanging with the boys in the cabin. It was a fun time, by the way. And <laughs> so it came to Sunday, you know, uh, we were doing the session, um, and then saying our goodbyes, head on the bus. And that's whenever, you know, I had, I was coming from camp from a good time, you know, like I was happy, I felt joyful, I felt at peace. But then here comes along a car. Try, trying to do something stupid and comes in and crashes behind another car and that's whenever a car wreck happened. Like, my life flashed before my eyes, you know, me and my foster mom. But God was there for us and I am so thankful for that because who knows what? We could have been dead. We could have been in the hospital. Who knows what? But God was there because he knew that I gave my life to him and he knew that I wanted to change for him and he was there for us, protecting us. And, you know, after that, I was, like, freaked out. You know, I didn't know what to say, what to do, or anything like that. And then I was at my foster mom. She was okay. And after that, we kept on moving. I was praying to myself, like, what happened, you know. But after that, I got home, and I was talking to my foster mom about what happened, what, like, what I did at camp. And I was, like, so excited and joyful and at peace, you know. I was bragging about my weekend, you know. And, you know, I've changed a lot. Like, I've started reading my Bible more. I've started to... i started to open up my heart for Him. I st And you know what? And I think we can all agree, we listen to some music that has cuss words in it. And doesn't, it's nothing gospel. But I've changed my, my music to, you know, Christian music, gospel music, all of that. And, you know, and after that, I've felt peace with God. And that's... This was a great opportunity for y'all, and for those people that hasn't gone, I think most of y'all have gone, but people who hasn't gone, I suggest y'all should go. It's a really great experience. Thank you, guys. With leaders, it's like you actually get to see what truly happens, and it's really great to see that. You know, you also get really great snacks. It's really great. <laughs> it's like the best, let me tell you. But no, you actually really get to see how everyone is saved or how everyone acts. And you get to see all of that happen. And so it's, it's really great. I think one of my favorite moments was small group moments. Um, it was my first small group with uh, 
my sixth graders. So it was just a lot to see them open up to. Um, we got them to actually uh, open up for about 20, 30 minutes. It was great. It's progress. Um, but it was just really great to see them and have them, you know, be able to confess stuff to me and, you know, me and uh, Tim, who's not here tonight, but me and Tim confess stuff to them. It was just really cool to see us, you know, bonding and all that, you know, so it's, it's really cool. And um, also one of my favorite moments was when you get a text from your youth pastor and he's like, I'm proud of you. You know you made it. Okay, you know you made it. Oh yeah, John? But, um, no. Um, also, none of this would be possible without my main man right there, Jer. I love you, Jer. Yes, sir. He's been with me since I've been in seventh grade and he's still with me. As I'm in um, Tuesday college nights, so, you know, he's really, he's the reason why I'm leading, because um, he was always there for me, and, you know, everything I went through as a kid, you know, just knowing that I could go to somebody, and I want to help other people as well, you know, other people, so it's really nice to see that. Um, and I just want to let all of you guys know, I know I'm like your age no, you're not. as well. So I know I'm like almost 19, you know, but I know I'm like y'all's age, but please, please don't hesitate to come up and ask me questions or if you guys need anything, I'm always there. You know, I may, it may be a little weird, you know, cause I'm your age, but I promise you, I may understand it a little bit more than others, if you know what I mean. So don't hesitate to come up and ask me questions. I'm happy to answer them. So yeah. Oh yeah. Now you claim me. <laughs> Let me take these off so I can be less nervous, I think. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm Desiree, Mary's mom. Um, this was my second year going to Winter Revive, but I have grown up in the church. Um, specifically, Soul Creek. So I was <clears throat> part of the original family, so like OG title kind of. <laughs> um, but um, as I was explaining during Sunday, I believe, um, last year I went in with it because for one, mama's got to keep her eyes, right? Yeah. So it was uh, from a distance, you know, with all the love and I love watching what God's doing in my children's lives and in yours. Um, but also for me um, to come in and I said I was in there cry and um, so as he was here, that Jeremy was that mentor in his life. Um, Amy was that for me. And so knowing her since I was six years old till now, um, not really understanding the importance of um, or impact someone actually has on your life um, then and um, until they're gone. Um, I feel like she, she really did leave a legacy and it was very true and honest in everything that she said and did. And that has impacted me as, as a wife, as a mother, as a friend, and for what I feel is my time. I used to not want to claim any um, any titles or even acknowledge that God has ordained anything in my life just because I feel like um, what were my intentions behind it? Like I feel sometimes when you get a label or a title um, that you're just that you all of a sudden become like okay you're a teacher that's, that's what I am I'm no longer these other things and people are looking at me for other stuff or sometimes it can even get to your head where you think you're like sometimes better than someone else. So I've 
um, kind of been struggling with that because there was a time where after youth group, there will be a time after youth group, but, um, it didn't seem that far or long ago for me, um, but now my daughter's almost 15, and that's, sometimes I'm just like, how did we even get here? So, um, I struggle a lot with identity, um, like I said, as being a mom, as a, a wife, and so I found it sometimes ramble, but I do have a point. <laughs> um, this uh, series was on Rooted, and I really appreciated it because a lot of it was not just for the students, it was for us too. And, um, I found out the hard way in December what, where my roots really were. And my roots were in my family. So I put everything into my family and my children and my husband and just um, the unit that we are. I'm just really a proud mother and how I've been able to do things. And like I say, I, 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 but it's really not me. It's Jesus. And when Melissa decided to go, to Mexico for two weeks with her dad. I was sick. I couldn't go. Leo, stay with me. Um, Thank you, sir. Taking that part of the unit away from me, I didn't. I felt like I didn't have anything to fall back on, and so I was. Um, as a parent, I mean, you students probably don't know how any of this feels yet, but as a parent, when you don't have your child with you, you're so connected. It just feel broken, like completely. And I mean, she's my world. But I had to come to the realization, and Cam gently spoke to me that as much as we love our children, God loves them infinitely more. And so I had to put my trust, and you always know, like, trust in the Lord um, with all your heart. But I literally had to live that for three weeks in estimate every single night on my knees in worship and prayer it, with the intentions of getting close to God and I hadn't done that in years. So even before when I revived, God was working in me and showing me that because my roots were in my family that I had no peace and I had to rely on Him and once I did and once I connected um, with the church family through Christmas holiday and, uh, and New Year's, you know, the church is my second family. And so relying on those relationships and, and each one of them pushing me closer to God, um, I just really appreciated all the messages about pruning and about rooting ourselves and, um, you know, just really int being intentional and devoting ourselves to God and watching our fruits. And so over, the, um, I would say the past couple, maybe year and a half, two years, since serving in children's ministry, watching some of them come up to now middle school, that was one of the reasons why I chose to go again, apart from being eyes once again, um, was to watch, I'm not gonna claim my fruit, but watch what God has done in me and me pouring out into the fifth graders who are now sixth graders, kind of just like watching what God has done in them and what he's still doing in camp. Um, but come to find out he was still working on me. Um, so um, going back to Amy and the importance of um, being like impactful in someone's life, it doesn't, it's not just a leader. It's all of you two with each other. And as you grow up and you get older, maybe you go out and maybe your calling is not to be a, uh, come back and be a leader, a youth leader. Um, but you, you still carry those with you. And um, as long as you are rooted and you have Christ, it doesn't matter where you go, what college you go to or if you decide not to go to college, if you decide to work, that's your new ministry. Everything around you, as long as you're living, um, who God calls you to be. 
And it doesn't take a label to do that. You don't have to be a youth pastor. You don't have to be a youth worshiper, any of that. Like the impact that you guys had on me this past weekend with was no labels. Um, I wish that every parent could have been able to see that. It truly is a gift what God has given to Austin and to Josh and to um, all of the leaders that devoted their time to this weekend. Um, to just watch everyone just grow. And I, I do have a problem. One of my problems is that I am, I am a strict mom and I love rules and I love, um, like everything has its place. And last year I kind of had a hard time because they're like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> and I don't want to ever control anyone, but I went in this year with just kind of like more laid back, like, um, I just want to watch what God does, and it that, that coming in with that different perspective, um, it really just it, it changed a lot of things on how I thought because you can make all the rules in the world. Yes, you guys are amazing though; they're like nothing bad, but just the energy that you guys have and stuff like that, and the fact that curfew was twelve forty-five. Come on, like I was thinking about like I took a nap after church today, and I'm still ready for bed. So. You know, it, it's just a lot. Um, uh, it was a lot for me to give up some of my, what I call luxuries. Um, but I'm very grateful that I did because I love all of you and I love seeing what God is doing in your life. And I just, I was sitting on the rocking chair with Melanie and just worshiping God and talking to her about Amy and it's been really, really hard for me, you guys. Like, I can't get through. Sometimes I can't see your name without crying. But this weekend, just the laughters and the pranks and stuff like that. Those, all that I got from her. <laughs> and so I felt like that was kind of like... It's kind of a good distraction. Seeing what she saw, so her perspective, as sitting there on the rocking chairs, her watching all of us hanging out, in the cold, like some no jackets, like why y'all uh, have blankets and everything. Um, just trying to see it from different points of view and just how much she just really loved. And that's what I want to be. I want I want to love and I want to be a good example. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've also changed how some things at home, some music, um, certain things that I've dealt with, especially my tongue. I had to, <laughs> Melissa asked me on the way here, this car was not going. I said, <sighs> and I made this weird noise, not intentionally. And she's like, did you just burp? I said, no, I was swallowing bad words. <laughs> uh -huh. So, you know, just um, this weekend really helped me. And um, I hope that it did y'all too. And for all the parents, um, thank you so much for sending your children um, to these camps and to Sundays and Wednesdays. And it was just a good time. Oh, yeah, Ms. Gregory. Good you, daughter. <laughs> what? Shut up. Okay. So, okay. I was not planning on doing the testimony. I'm going to sit up here. At all. And so my mother came up here and I just want to say thank you and I love her for everything that she's done um, and has given me. But um, this year's. Uh, okay. Um, so this year's, I guess, theme or topic was rooted and it really, like, it really touched everyone. I can see through everybody's testimonies and I can't do anything. Um, but that night, I kind of realized that uh, ever since Cross, Crossroads really changed me, um, and I can say that, but I've seen myself rooted in the world and like worldly sin and, um, you know, just pleasing people. So I've, I've been giving my attention a lot to this one particular person. Um, 
<laughs> and it's been taking my time away from God. But when Didi was talking about pruning people out of your lives and just cutting off those bad branches, it like it really hurt me to think about because at one at some point you're gonna have to let go of these people that are keeping you away from God. Um, the people that make you happy in the world, it, it's not gonna like, it's not gonna make you happy in the end um, when you're in the kingdom or if those people keep you away from the kingdom. So I've been trying to change my I've been trying to change my ways, um, listen to different music, because we all know music is like a big, it's a big thing. So I've been trying to keep keeping myself accountable to listening to worship music only. Um, and I'm just ready to see what God does in my life for this year and the rest of my life. Back off of, uh, we did have a discussion about pruning. Um, <clears throat> there's, I think, different types of pruning. So, for example, you have a friend who's like really, you know, kind of not the best influence or um, who doesn't know God. Um, I would just encourage you set boundaries with that person. And before you cut them off completely, because maybe you are their lifeline to Christ. And maybe it's up to you to invite them to church and to share the Lord with. Um, instead of saying, oh, this person's so bad for me, I'm cut them off completely. But before you do that, are you doing enough? Are you doing your part um, to help lead that person to salvation? And if they're truly like influence over you... Um, is bigger than yours other than then obviously yes for sure 100 percent it's your time to go and boundaries um but i was just kind of encouraging her because these people haven't heard um or to our knowledge have heard about jesus before and don't believe in god so i think um you know it's a part part of our duty to to share um god's love and just to really evaluate all of our relationships both friends and family and boundaries are definitely important. Y'all, my heart is beating so fast. <laughs> Um, and I've been to many camps um, in the past like seven years and I don't think any of them have hit me as hard as this one did. Um, I am, I have the two biggest thing about myself, that I'm a big warrior and then my problem is I don't tell anyone about my problems. I don't like to burden people with them so I keep everything bottled up inside. Um, and so I think that this year whenever camp was talking about um, just like knowing where you stand and like what your soil is. I was really, I felt like I was in the thorns because I was like, I thought my relationship with God was good, but there were still things that were holding me back. And um, I found myself worrying a lot about like, uh, what college I'm gonna go to and like being successful because I don't wanna be no one in life and like, you know, I wanna do things. Uh, and so I think that um, on Saturday, uh, whenever, like we all know that like Nathan got sick right and everything. Um, and so I think that was the moment where God was like, these are the moments that you can't control everything in your life. And you really have to just learn to trust in him. And that has been something that has been like really hard for me because I like I like to have control over everything I do. Like in the group projects, I'm the one making sure everyone's doing what they gotta do and like, we're gonna ace it and everything. So I, I like to be able to know what I'm doing and where I'm going. and. I think that that is something that God was asking me to listen to what he wants me to do and like what is what is his plan for me because obviously his plan is greater than what I can think or what I can um, expect from life and so I think that was a lesson for me to know that in that moment there was nothing I could do but pray for Nathan and hope that everything would be okay um, but there was I felt so powerless that 
to the point that I was really like, God, I, I really can't do anything. Like, and like, he showed me that there are so many moments in my life that I maybe haven't lived through yet that I have to learn to just trust in him and like know that his plans for our lives are greater than what we can think about. Um, and so I think that that's, well, that's my number one takeaway, that just trusting him, like, he knows what's going to happen today, tomorrow. Like, we could even die tomorrow. We don't know it, um, but he does. So, and that sounds so simple to me. Like, my whole life I thought that I had been trusting God, and I was like, yeah, like, I trust you, and, like, in the songs and everything. And I, I have firm foundation in my playlist, and it has been one of my most played songs, yet yeah. it had never hit me like it did at camp. And I was like, is my foundation really firm? Like, is that really what I'm, like, what I'm singing, is that how I really feel, or is that just what I say for now, but then I go home and I try to just, like, push away God and only call Him when I need Him. Um, so I think that my biggest takeaway was make sure that when you, like, as you're living your life, you make sure that God is involved, and you're not just like, okay, like, I can take it from here, or like, no, now I need you, because now something's happening. Um, so then just know that he's not there just for a moment and then you can just push him away like it has to be a constant thing that you're always thinking about him